the somewhat local news, but this kind of affects everyone, a former Aspen councilman was arrested for stealing $2.1 million in skis and snowboards. $2.1 million. Uh, that's a lot. A lot. Or actually, my bad, $2.4 million. Yeah. $2.4 million. So yeah, they found... What two hundred and what was it two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars worth of gear in like a storage, storage locker in Basalt? And he had sold two point one million already on eBay. On eBay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Derek Johnson and his wife Carrie mm-hmm. Johnson from Aspen. Uh, they're facing as many as twenty four years in prison as convicted. But I mean, they were selling them under an eBay account called Sport and Ski, and the, the guy had a pretty damn good deal going with this because like they would take the Reynolds strip off this any of the markings from it sell it he somehow figured out a way to bill Aspen Ski Company for the boxes to send them to the people like you know they had spreadsheets like these guys were not small time criminals yeah you know they had a spreadsheet that showed between 2010 and 2018 that they they had listed two point uh, one five million in total sales from their eBay account. Like that is how is that not caught earlier? Like what kind of LP? And like the funny thing is, this dude was an Aspen City Councilman at one point. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, pillar of the community right there. Holy shit! I, you're already living in a really rich area. I mean, maybe like I can only assume that the motivation to do this was to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, like like this is. Yeah, but I mean, here's yeah, a, here, $42,000 in boxes charged to Ski Co. Since how November not, 2015. Yeah. How did they not catch that? Well, here's here's the quote from the article. Based on existing evidence, Johnson would take skis from Aspen Skiing Company's inventory, and he or his wife would deliver them to a small warehouse in Aspen that they rented. It appears that their practice was to remove any stickers identifying the skis as ASC property, photograph them, and post them on eBay for sale by auction. To facilitate delivery by skis to purchasers, the Johnson used ski boxes that were purchased and paid for by ASC. Holy fuck, there is really, there is just a giant ass loophole in their loss prevention if they can do that. Like, this blows my fucking mind, because they they caught that kid up here who was stealing Mm -hmm. uh, Tom was his name. My roommate worked with him. Uh, but he was, I can't think of his last name, but he was, they caught him with $10,000 worth of equipment that he right. had stolen and was selling. Yeah. And, and he was just going around and just like taking it off people's porches and other people's like. And taking it off the racks and yeah. stuff like that. But mm-hmm. this is like some next level, like you have to be doctoring your inventory numbers for ASC. Right. Yeah. And, like how does, how does ASC not notice that like. I mean, that's the other thing is even even over eight years, two point four million. Like that's not a couple skis a year. That's a lot of skis a year. A lot. So how does that go miss? Like they just accept that they're losing fifteen to twenty pieces at like twice throughout the year. Like at what? And they're saying it's demo equipment too, so it's not even just regular rentals. Like it's no, this is high end stuff. Higher end demo equipment. Like, so let, let's say like casually, it's probably an eight hundred to a, let's just say it's a thousand dollars set of skis. Yeah, that is a lot of pairs of skis to get to that number. Mm-hmm. And how do you? So like I know when I worked in corporate stores, a good shrink was three to five percent. You you they would do, they. Put it into the budget and the inventory that you would lose three to five percent is what you would guarantee to lose, and you'd be prepared for that. You have to have everything. Like when I worked at Christie's, like we had everything cataloged, we had everything, you know, every inventory, every piece had a serial number. We knew where they were. How the fuck do you lose that much stuff? That is astronomical. Like, it's pretty hard to believe that whoever runs ASC was not involved. The, there had to be other people. There had to be somebody on the inside with ASC to, to get things fixed. And then even still, like that that goes on to a point of being visually noticeable. Well, I mean, the guy did work for, for Skiko. 
So, but, you know. There had to be somebody else helping. But, I mean, like, come on. There there should be fail-safes in place to absolutely. catch that. Like, your shop has an LP, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That would, like, if we just, if we had that many pieces missing, like, whoever's in charge of the rental department would get fired immediately. Yeah. And then and then it would be investigated. Yeah. Because that's, like, that's the first thought. You have, I mean, it, I have to do all the math. Let's say it's 10 pairs of skis a year, which sounds low. But if 10 pairs of skis, 10 pairs of demo skis go dis, disappearing from any of the rental shops in our company, that's an immediate investigation, guaranteed. Because the first thought is going to be, okay, who's stealing these skis? Well, so when I worked at Christie's and Steamboat, we lost one pair of skis, um, which actually turned up like three months later. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you better believe that, like, and these were not cheap. These were like $1,800 race skis. We had it in the system, flagged, like our CEO called, because the big corporate store for Christie's was right across the street from our mm -hmm. store. CEO called, like, wanted to know what was going on. Like, I mean, this was, like, within a day. Everyone knew it. And we had notes. We had done everything in our power to make sure that we were good with everything. And that. And Christie's is not a small company. I think they have 54 or 58 stores. Mm -hmm. So, like, we, you know, this is... And Skiko, I mean... I'm pretty sure that they run all their own stores down there. Like they, they have flagship stores. Like they have a Gucci store right on the hill. They own it though. I mean, mm -hmm. like millions of dollars. How do you fucking not catch that? How? Like, yeah, that mystifies me. But hey, if any of you have ever had your stuff stolen in Aspen, <laughs> <laughs> might be these guys. Might be these guys. Yeah. You know. The funny thing is, they're um, they had almost all positive reviews on their I was eBay. Program, just looking at that, you know, yeah, <laughs> like all five stars. No, ne they had one negative comment. I want to know what that one was. Right, but yeah, like seriously, how the hell do you not have that much? That's like serious. I mean, it's obviously felony level. Yeah, and, and there's probably some tax evasion in there. Oh, it's gotta be, yeah. Because like, and uh, taking money over state lines doesn't that hit you with the RICO Act? I have no idea. I feel like there's something in there with because you it might be wire fraud or mail fraud or something because it's, it's probably wire it's probably wire fraud because you're taking money from out of state, so it's crossing state lines. But you know, pillar of the community. City councilman. Mm -hmm. Oops. Sucks to suck. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> oops. Oops. So, you know, can't always judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Oh.